Morning, Jess. Morning, Good to be with you. So recently we've been reading through the, the story of Jacob in the book of Genesis uh, and having, well, we've learned lots of interesting things uh, and some of them we want to share with you uh, over a series of five talks. So we'll be following Jacob's physical journey of how he travelled from Bathsheba in the southern Israel to Haran in modern day Turkey and then back again. Hey, but as well as that, we'll also be following his spiritual journey. So that's his physical journey, up and down. His spiritual journey from someone who kept God at arm's length to someone who found a personal relationship with God and got to the point where he declared that God was his God. And that's why we've called this series of talks, Jacob, A Journey to Faith. We think you already know the stories, so we'll just give a very short version, but we're also going to take a sideways look at them. Maybe in a way you haven't considered before. If you're unsure of the stories, don't worry, as we'll give you the Bible reference of the title pages of each talk for you to read at your leisure. Mm. Okay, so Jacob's physical journey starts with his family, home down in Bathsheba, that's mm -hmm. in the south. Uh, and he lived there with his dad, Isaac, his mum, Rebecca, uh, and he had a slightly older twin brother called Esau. Uh, Indeed, in his early years, he would also have known his granddad, Abraham, before he died. The family seemed to be quite rich for their times. Mm. Jacob would have lived well and looked after the family's sheep and goats. His older twin brother, Esau, was very different to Jacob. Ooh. Out and about a lot, more of a warrior type. In truth, although they were twins, they didn't go on well, did they? Nah. Um, which was really understandable because uh, Jacob kind of conned Esau out of a lot of his inheritance. Uh, indeed, it got so bad that one day Esau made a vow that when the time was right, he was coming after Jacob and would kill him. Mm. Uh, indeed, that's what prompted his dad's instruction to Jacob to leave home, uh, probably in his mid-40s, and go and stay with his uncle Laban for a time. Um, if I make it a bit easier, if I just look at a map, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, let's get a map then. So here we are with our uh, map of the uh, ancient Middle East. You'll see at the bottom of the map is Beersheba. And Beersheba is where it was Jacob's home. And he was to go north to uh, Haran, which is at the other side of the Euphrates River, which is where his uncle Laban lived. And that's a distance of around about 500 miles which if you put in your sat nav of how long it would take a camel to get there, is probably about 20 days. But before all that happened, we can imagine Jacob as a young lad, sitting around the campfire in the evening, listening to stories of his granddad and his dad and what God had done in their lives. How he protected and directed and prospered them and given them great promises for their future and their descendants, which of course would have included Jacob. Good point. God was so real to them. In time, Jacob would hear God introduce himself as the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. And he would have remembered those stories and known who was speaking. Mm. But for Jacob at this point of his life, it was his granddad's God mm -hmm. uh, and his dad's God certainly wasn't his God. So for Jacob's spiritual journey, I guess it started with him listening to what 
and his dad and his granddad would have said, you know, I was God in other people's lives. Uh, it would seem that uh, for Jacob, God didn't seem to mean very much uh, because he looked to uh, get on in life himself uh, by deceit and by hard work. Uh, he would look after himself, thank you very much. And he would just keep God, yeah, just out there for a bit. Uh, so really, he had a long way to travel from there to get to the point where God was his God. Yeah. Let's pause the story there for today and think about the knowledge that Jacob gained from listening to those stories of God from his dad and his granddad. Perhaps we need to challenge ourselves to ask how many of our God's stories have we shared with our children and our grandchildren? Perhaps we need to ponder Romans 10 verse 14. Now that says, how can they, which includes our family, believe in the one who they've not heard of? And how can they hear without someone telling them? Or in other words, how can they get to know Jesus unless we tell them? Mm, it's true. Because we, we all know the, the power of someone's testimony and how much more to share that uh, in the lives of those who are close to us. Mm -hmm. So let's just pray for, Father God, we just ask you uh, for opportunity to speak to, yeah, all those in our family, those who are dear to us, and that we will have an opportunity to be able to talk to them about what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, you, you have been working in our lives. Thank you for the people who um, introduced us to you and help us do the same for others. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So next time, we'll join Jacob on the first part of his journey where he had a disturbed night's sleep mm. in a place called Luz, which he renamed as Bethel. So hopefully you'll join us. Thank you for being with us today. See you again. Bye. Bye.